But imagine a scenario where these pirates try to attack the mighty ships of the U.S. Navy. You know, those that are armed to the teeth and yeah. equipped with state-of-the-art technology. I know. Often exceeding 300 meters in length with the capacity of displacing 100,000 tons. Oh, boy. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to imagine that scenario. But, um, yeah, this does not go well, for sure. I mean, uh, for the pirates. What's up, my friend? Today I'll be reacting to pirates attack the wrong US Navy ship and then this happened. Oh boy. <laughs> I already feel bad for the pirates. Not really. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like on this video, thank you so much for that, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys end up recommending this one quite a lot, so let's play it. Okay, what's going on? Have you ever heard of the Pirates of Somalia? Yes. The group of people who wield not just cutlasses and pistols, but power and chaos in equal measure. But imagine a scenario where these pirates try to attack the mighty ships of the US Navy. You know, those that are armed to the teeth and yeah. equipped with state-of-the-art technology. I know. Often exceeding 300 meters in length with the capacity of displacing 100,000 tons. Oh, boy. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to imagine that scenario. But, um, yeah, this does not go well, for sure. I mean, uh, for the pirates. I suspect Americans will be fine. Just saying. By the way, you guys in America have an expression that, uh, look, I'm a family-friendly channel. Let's be real. So I will not say it. But basically goes this way. F around and find out. The expression is not F around, as you can imagine. But uh, you may find what the word F means, right? Uh, if not, send me a DM or something. But, oh, actually, don't. Never mind. What would happen when these modern pirates try to mess with the deadliest ships? They got destroyed of the US Navy fleet. Don't underestimate the pirates though. They've long evolved from what's depicted in the tales of the infamous Caribbean pirates and the legendary feats of figures like Blackbeard and Captain Kidd. Okay. Today's pirates are the real deal. <laughs> what? And if you think they don't pack a punch, you might be wrong. Okay, okay, chill. <laughs> okay, so pirates are the real deal. They pack a punch. Look, <laughs> of course, let's say, I try to punch Mike Tyson. I can try it. And maybe if I'm really lucky and he's not looking at me, I may be able to land the punch. But you know what happened after that. He kills me. You know? Yeah. With one punch. Join us as we delve into the gripping account of how a notorious band of Somali pirates set their sights on the MV Maersk, Alabama. Okay. We'll soon discuss what happened when the U.S. Navy deployed the USS Howard Destroyer and how it took the United States and several other nations to negotiate with the Somali pirates for the release of the ship. Leaving Let's us to wonder yet again, do pirates actually stand a chance? Sorry, spoiler. I know I'm, I'm being annoying with this. Spoiler, my friends, but I don't believe it. How did piracy start in Somalia? Somalia in the Horn of Africa faced a lot of challenges. Wars, poverty, and no law and order led to piracy off its coast. With this type of stuff, people that live there are always the ones suffering. And that, that's sad, but I mean, it is what it is at this point. In the 1990s, Somalia had a big war after their president, Siad Barre, was removed. Without a strong government, groups with guns started trying to take over. Hmm. Foreign boats took advantage of this mess. They stole fish and dumped waste in Somalia's waters. So local fishermen turned into pirates to protect their waters and earn money. Okay. By the 2000s, the world was watching Somali pirates. They had big guns and would take big ships hostage, asking for a lot of money to release them. These pirates used small, quick boats and would often keep ship crews as hostages. Getting money for releasing these ships and crews became a big business. Back in the day, pirates lived on their ships, but modern pirates like the ones in Somalia have bases on land and used fast boats for their attacks. 
Mm. They use guns more than swords now. They so, okay, of course, uh, imagine trying to fight. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I should not, not be laughing at this. But he said they use guns more than swords. Imagine if they try to fight the American destroyer with a sword. Even with, even with guns, this will be problematic. But uh, that said, I was not aware of this story about what, what ended up happening in Somalia for 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 them, you know, becoming so famous uh, with, with the, the pirate stuff. They want to scare people, steal things, and sometimes they use marooning. marooning. What's marooning? It's a pirate punishment where they leave someone on a deserted island. It's a way to mm. punish those who pirates think are causing trouble. The person left behind would have a bit of food, some water, and a gun. This way, if things got too tough, they had a way out. The fight against piracy. On one side stands the mighty US Navy, a symbol of naval supremacy armed with cutting edge technology and a mission to protect global maritime interests. On the other side, an elusive and cunning adversary emerges, pirates. These audacious outlaws, fueled by desperation and the lure of untold fortunes, navigate treacherous waters with their nimble vessels, striking fear into the hearts of seafarers. Okay. As the US Navy deploys its sophisticated arsenal and strategic prowess to combat this elusive menace, an intricate game unfolds. With every encounter, the stakes escalate. In the face of the grave threat posed by pirates to maritime trade and the safety of seafarers, the US Navy has devised a comprehensive approach to tackle this age-old scourge head-on. Central to their strategy is the implementation of non-lethal deterrents, which play a pivotal role in mitigating the risks when encountering such threats. But why non-lethal weapons? Why not just use full force against the pirates? These okay, to be fair, I think like, I mean, even if you destroy all the pirates, there will be the next generation, you know, people, this, oh man, this, those topics are so complex because you don't solve the problem destroying the problem, you know, um, there, there is always the next wave, so. Are questions up for debate. But to be honest, man, it's incredible how advanced America is when it comes to, to military. I was joking a bit at, at the beginning, as you guys probably noticed, but uh, yeah, this is really not fair. I mean, America is so, yeah, this, you know, this is like a kid versus uh, adult. Regardless, the US Navy strives to deter and dissuade pirates from engaging in acts of violence and piracy thus safeguarding the well-being of those traversing the high seas. Amongst the methods employed, long-range acoustic devices, or LRADs, are one of the most popular. LRAD systems emit powerful, focused sound waves, which are basically pain-inducing audible beams. The sonic mm. weapon produces a high-pitched noise that is higher than the tolerance level of an average human being, deafening the victims and preventing them from coming any closer. The Mighty Water Cannon is another widely utilized non-lethal offering an effective deterrent against piracy. This okay, this is fascinating. I was not aware of this again. Okay. Powerful device projects a forceful stream of water, creating an impenetrable barrier that dissuades pirates from boarding merchant vessels. Moreover, the water cannon's ability to swiftly fill pirate boats hampers their mobility and restricts their maneuvering capabilities. Plus, we all know what happens when water fills up in a boat. Other more powerful methods include stun grenades, electric secure fences, laser devices, and dazzle guns, which are certainly non-lethal, but extremely painstaking to say the least. The U.S. Navy under attack. During its service, the USS Nicholas FFG-47 encountered a dramatic incident involving an attack by pirates. In April 2010, while operating in the waters of the Indian Ocean, the okay. frigate found itself engaged in a tense confrontation with Somali pirates. The incident unfolded when the USS Nicholas detected a suspected pirate vessel, referred to as a skiff, in the vicinity. The frigate's crew swiftly mobilized and initiated appropriate defensive measures. As the pirate skiff attempted to flee, the USS Nicholas, acting in accordance with its mission to combat piracy, commenced pursuit. 
In a remarkable display of skill and precision, the USS Nicholas managed to intercept the pirate skiff. As the situation escalated, the pirates aboard the skiff opened fire on the frigate, initiating an exchange of gunfire. The crew of the USS Nicholas, well-trained and resolute, effectively defended their vessel against the pirate attack. To be honest, and correct me if I'm wrong, but at the end of the day, there is some compassion for those people because American could destroy them right away if, if they really wanted. I mean, good on America again. The engagement resulted in the apprehension of several pirates, while others were forced to abandon their skiff and flee. The successful defense of the USS Nicholas showcased the ship's robustness and the effectiveness of its crew in combating piracy threats. No, for this sure. incident highlighted the lack of sophistication among most pirates, who often make irrational decisions and target vessels larger than they can handle. Another note... To be honest, again, now this is the different part. Imagine the ego you have to, to have to look at. <laughs> look, if you see the American flag, you should already. Yeah, I'm out. No, sorry. Never mind. I thought that was the Portuguese flag. Why did I say that? No, okay. Um, but imagine that, you know, um, <laughs> you have to have a big ego. Yeah, you know what? We may be able to take that uh, destroyer or that uh, aircraft. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> notable attack made on the U.S. Navy by pirates occurred in April of 2009, when the USS Bainbridge was involved in the rescue of the MV Maersk, Alabama. The okay. MV Maersk, Alabama, a U.S. flagged... By the way, that stuff is giant. ...container ship was hijacked by Somali pirates in the Indian Ocean. The USS Bainbridge, an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer, subsequently responded to the distress call and reached the scene. During the incident, the pirates held the ship's captain, Richard Phillips, hostage on a lifeboat. Negotiations with the pirates were initiated, but as the situation grew increasingly tense, oh the Navy made the decision to take action. Several Navy SEAL snipers from the USS Bainbridge conducted a daring nighttime operation successfully eliminating three pirates and rescuing Captain Phillips unharmed. This operation, known as Operation Neptune Spear, showcased the skill and precision of the U.S. Navy in countering piracy threats, even in dire encounters. It's to be noted that the United States has been fortunate to possess strong capabilities in the fight against piracy, but other nations encounter more significant obstacles when dealing with this maritime menace. I believe it. Factors such as resource disparities, geographical considerations, and varying levels of international support contribute to a less advantageous situation for many countries in their efforts to combat pirates. U.S. Navy capabilities. Let's delve into the prowess of... <laughs> no matter how many times I see this video, but this always scares me. <laughs> so this is the aircraft uh, uh, right on the top. But look at the crew that comes around with them. Jesus. <laughs> of US Navy People are afraid of the alien invasion. I'm afraid of American invasion. Forget the alien invasion. Look at that. Chips. With By the way, I know Portugal and America are friends, but still, who knows? <laughs> Interestingly... Some pirates believe they can challenge. To state the obvious, the U.S. Navy boasts the world's largest and most formidable fleet. The Zumwalt class is the pinnacle of surface combatants, showcasing... Wait, what is that? Oh, oh man, I, I may have a new video to react. The, the zoo what? Sorry? The Zumwalt class is the pinnacle of surface combatants, okay. showcasing innovation in naval capabilities. The USS Zumwalt, the headliner of this class, is engineered for diverse missions from... Sorry, my friend. Should I react to that? That seems insane. What is that? Turrets to sea control. These destroyers reflect the US Navy's vision for the future. They're not just for today's... So, sorry. Put the number 9 in the chat if you want me to react to, to that uh, specific ship slash boat. That looks a beast. Wait, what? Okay, never mind. Destroyers reflect the U.S. Navy's vision for the future. They're not just for today's challenges, but are crafted to integrate emerging technologies and adapt to new mission scenarios. Sure. Speaking of advancement, the Zumwalt will soon incorporate the Pentagon's common hypersonic glide body, 
This system, soaring at Mach 5 or more, can obliterate targets just with its astonishing velocity. Jeez. On the other hand, the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer holds its place among the world's elite ships. Commissioned in 1991, it remains a linchpin in the Navy's fleet. These destroyers come equipped with an arsenal that can deter a spectrum of threats, from aerial to subsurface. Pirates even so think those destroyers, I'm aware, they are beasts also. Thinking of confronting an Arleigh Burke class would be courting disaster. Jesus. Especially given its Aegis combat system that can track, target, and destroy threats swiftly and effectively. Okay. The sheer power of these missiles can neutralize threats in mere seconds. Pirates considering challenging such a force? That'd be a grave miscalculation. <laughs> but for some reason, pirates still end up attacking U.S. Navy ships. So here's a question for you. Why do you think these pirates try and attack such huge vessels? Uh, low IQ. Okay, I may should have not said that, but I, I don't see other explanation. And what do you think about using non-lethal weapons? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Yeah, I already did. A united front against piracy. In the ongoing battle against piracy, prominent organizations such as the International Maritime Bureau have emerged to play vital roles. Okay. The IMB serves as a crucial monitoring and documentation body, providing essential information on piracy incidents worldwide to governments and authorities. Mm. Additionally, the United Nations has taken proactive steps by establishing the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which sets okay. forth a comprehensive legal framework for addressing piracy. The UNCLOS, mandates international cooperation among nations in apprehending and prosecuting pirates, regardless of their nationality or the location of their criminal activities. One notable force in the fight against piracy is the Combined Task Force 150, or CTF-150. Operating under the Combined Maritime Forces, CTF-150 is a multinational naval task force with a primary mission to enhance maritime security and stability in the Gulf of Aden, the Arabian Sea, and Indian Ocean. It's okay. Again, I was not aware of this, but this is good to know. And I know right now there is some, uh, I would say, mini war, let, let's put this way, against Yemen because of the boats. But uh, I actually, I'm not sure if this, they end up messing with UK boats or American boats, But because I know both are involved. But uh, I've been not following that that close, to, to be honest. This extends to countering terrorism preventing illicit activities including piracy and smuggling, and promoting a safe and secure maritime environment. Mm. Remember that the fight against piracy is a collaborative endeavor, with nations sure. contributing their naval assets and personnel on a rotational basis to form this task force. Therefore, this multinational coalition can focus on conducting patrols, surveillance and interdiction operations in the designated areas. The task force comprises warships, aircraft, and personnel from various countries, promoting international cooperation and coordination. Additionally, those close partnerships are maintained with organizations like the European Union Naval Force and NATO. NATO yeah. Of course, the US Navy plays a significant role in this collective effort to combat piracy, yet again demonstrating its commitment to maritime security. In your opinion, how do you think the collaboration between these organizations can be further strengthened? Uh, honestly, I, I, I don't know the, the answer for that question, but uh, I think we are lucky. And again, a lot of people disagree. I do not care, but I think we are lucky that uh, America is the one being... Uh, number one because at the end of the day they they protect all of us so that's why i have so much respect to everyone that uh, you know fights for uh, f because the people say oh they fight for americans seem to say they fight for our freedom also they fight for my freedom you know because you know america if things go wrong yeah they will be there and what do you think about using non-lethal weapons against pirates should we use full force instead share your tactics i uh, I mean, full force again, at the end of the day, if those 
new technology can be enough to put them away. I think, yeah, just use that. But if they mess around, that's the problem. I would say one thing. America should never negotiate uh, with uh, with pirates because that's just a bad precedent. Ideas or thoughts? Not president, president. Did I say that word correct? I'm not sure. Put this in the comment section below. All in all, through active participation in multinational operations such as the Combined Task Force 150, the U.S. Navy plays a crucial role in deterring and countering pirate activities in vulnerable regions. Their commitment is exemplified by the deployment of naval assets, like the USS Howard, to monitor and protect hijacked ships like the Faena. Collaborating with international partners, the US Navy demonstrates unwavering determination in protecting global trade and ensuring the well-being of seafarers. Our deepest respect and gratitude go out to these courageous men and women yep. who bravely serve in the ongoing battle against pirates. Their selflessness and unwavering dedication deserve our highest admiration. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Oh, and it if was you a love great it, video. Then please subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll be okay. Um, actually, showing us your support, which uh, is just oh, sorry. Um, I thought this was a great video. I mean, uh, I enjoyed this one quite a lot. And I thought it was funny the way he was presenting that, oh, the modern pirates, they may pack a punch. Not really, <laughs> to be real. I mean, of course, uh, you know, f maybe for other nations can be problematic, but for America is not problematic at all. And um, yeah, I thought the video was great. Great explanation also, also what's why the Somali pirates are so famous, the history behind it. And um, I really enjoy reacting to this type of stuff. Um, feel free to leave a like if you also enjoyed this, this type of videos. But um, I thought it was a great, great one. And that's it for today, my friends. Hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Also, consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. And also, let me remember you about one thing. I have a Patreon community. I put videos there a bit earlier than I put on YouTube. So if you want to support me and have access to early content, go to my uh, Patreon. I will leave a link on my description. Take a look at that. You can also scan the QR code you'll be seeing here and uh, that's it.